Today we're going to take my flexible PCB actuator and try to make it smaller. This might be essential for some of my next projects. So let's start by looking at the original design. The solar coil has a total of 72 turns with a pitch of 5 by 5 mm that all fit inside the diameter of 2 cm. The first thing that can make our coil smaller here is the pitch. This design is now 2 years old and since then PCBWay has improved their limits. Their website says that they can manufacture a clearance of 0.06mm without any extra cost. But personally I don't like to go with the exact limit, so to be safer I consider 0.1 as the minimum limit. And this change reduced the size by 15%. Now given that the pitch cannot be further reduced, the layer count is the only other parameter that we can change to make the coil smaller. And that's exactly what I did. I reduced the area by going from 35 turns per layer to 17 turns per layer. And this got us to 50% smaller than the original design. But I had to make a trade-off because the PCB is now twice the thickness. Now while I was ordering from PCBWay, I noticed that for both the 4 layer and 6 layer flexible PCBs, there is no price difference, it just had to be increased to 0.35mm thick. So I got tempted, designed another 6 layer flexible PCB actuator and convinced PCBWay to sponsor these PCBs in the name of science. And the area got reduced by 68%. Okay, so now that we have seen all the different parameters of these flexible PCB actuators, let's go through all the specs one by one and compare them. Okay, so here I made a little summary of all the results. So these are all the specs that we have already talked about. But then we have the data for the four new tests that I have performed. So let's start by discussing the coil's resistance. As you can see here, as the number of layers got higher, the resistance got lower. This may have happened because of various reasons. Remember that in reality a coil is just one long trace. And even though we increase the number of layers, it is not going to be 100% the same length, mainly because of the different diameters. My obsession with making things smaller also had to do with this variation, because on every layer I increased, I reduced to turns. So this results means that all these coils will draw different amount of currents at the same supply voltage. It is not that much different, but it also affected the thermal behavior of the coil. And this graph over here shows us how hot things are getting. I don't think that we can just blame the resistance alone for this thermal difference, because remember that the 2-layer coil has a larger area, while the 6-layer coil has all the turns jam-packed in a smaller one. So each layer is like heating up the same tiny region. Personally, I think 80 degrees Celsius is the limit at which we can drive our coil. If you touch the coil at this temperature, you will feel it warm, but not too hot that it will burn your finger. So based on this data, we can say that the 6 layer coil can be driven with a maximum of 2.6 volts, the 4 layer coil can be driven with a maximum of 3 volts, and both 2 layer coils can be driven somewhere around 4 to 5 volts. The last test here shows a rough estimate of the coil's magnetic field strength. I don't actually have a Gauss meter, so instead I use my phone's compass to try and estimate this value. And as the number of layers increased, the magnetic field got weaker. This behavior can be explained through this equation because the magnetic field gets weaker as the coil gets thicker. But I also noticed one advantage with having a smaller area. Give me a second. The peak force generated by the coil's magnetic field is always at the center. At the edges the field is much weaker, so the smaller the coil's diameter is, the more uniform the field gets. Now let's talk about the stiffness. A PCB always needs to have a dielectric between two copper layers, so it makes sense that if we add more layers the thickness will increase. And that will also affect how much our flexible circuit can bend. I made some research on this topic and I found that generally you can use a band radius that is 10 times the thickness. So that is 1mm for the 2 layer PCB, 2mm for the 4 layer and 3.5mm for the 6 layer. I also confirmed this with PCBWay and they gave me values that are smaller than this guideline. 
To test if this was true, I connected the coil to a multimeter and using a vernier, I crushed the PCB until the continuity got broken. Surprisingly, it never broke. All the PCBs were practically folded into two, and the copper traces were still uncut. Now this is something that I don't recommend doing, but bending the PCB around a small radius is definitely possible if it's going to remain static. Now let's talk about flapping. As shown here, the extra thickness of the 4 and 6 layer PCBs reduce the flappiness of my flappy actuators. This all have to do with the stiffness, but remember that this flappy behavior also depends on other parameters like the magnetic field strength of the magnet, the perpendicular distance and also the width. The last test I was curious about was the sound. These coils can also act as a speaker and here I drove them with a 1 kHz square wave. The 6 layer coil was the loudest with this plastic cup diaphragm, which kind of makes sense because it has the smallest resistance. Conclusion, what did we learn from all these tests? Well, I think the most important thing that we need to remember is that the selection of the coil will purely depend on the application. For flappy movements, the 2 layer flexible PCB is definitely the right option. But for other applications where the coil is static, increasing the number of layers is definitely a good solution. You obviously need to keep in mind its extra cost and whether other components will be actually larger than the coil itself. So, I hope you learned something from this video. I have other projects coming that uses these types of flexible PCB actuators. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Bye bye!